All right, welcome everybody. Um, welcome to our Skillful Mind webinar on mental health first aid. Uh, so this is something that I recently partook of. It was a course, a mental health first aid course. And in fact, I didn't actually know that there was such a thing. Um, obviously, I knew that there's a physical, um, you know, um, first aid course, but not a mental health first aid course. And I really felt strongly that this is something that we need to be aware of um, in terms of our duty of care to, you know, when we are dealing with um, different people in our meditation group, coming across different people, because, I mean, most, well, not most, but a lot of the people that are coming to us are generally coming to us for a reason, and it may be that they're suffering from our low levels of depression or anxiety um, or, or other issues. We, Generally, we don't really know, um, but it is a good idea to have an awareness of um, any situations that come up. So uh, you can really simply ask, are you okay? It's a little bit more in depth. Um, and what I'm going to do is go through a very brief overview because it is, I don't know if you can see this book, there's this great big book, Mental Health First Aid. See how thick it is? There's so much information in here. It's a two-day course, um, and you get this book with the course. Um, but I, I wanted to whet your appetite, so to speak, so you know, you've got um, a little bit of a heads up on what to look for. Um, and over a course of you know, 12 months or so, I mean, I, I certainly, um, or over, over the course of a few months, I've certainly got to know really well you know, the people, the regulars. I, I have people that have been coming to me for over 12 months. So you get to know their, you know, you get to know their moods, their personality. You can see if there's something a little bit amiss, and and it's just having that simple awareness and and asking them, are you okay? And there are strategies um, as part of this course that uh, we can follow, um, just to help them um, get back into a better space or seek help if they need to. Uh, or, um, and of course, you know, it's well documented that early intervention gives them the best chance of recovery. So we're really wanting to, you know, get in at the forefront and help our people um, because, you know, we all know how amazing meditation is, the benefits of it, um, and that's why people are coming because they're wanting to help themselves. So if we can just have that added um, awareness, then I, I think, um, you know, we're, we're adding, we're value adding, it's duty of care and um, it's just a, a nice thing to do. And plus, you know, you're more aware of what's happening around you in your own family and friends circles too. And I think that's really important. Uh, it's just, it's got so many benefits. It's not particularly um, for, you know, meditation leaders running groups. I think just as a, a general um, life awareness uh, having having that knowledge is um, going to help someone someday. So I'm going to see if I can move the screen. Yeah, okay. I think this is working. So hello, who have we got? Bob. Oh hi Bob, how are you? I'm just marvellous. How are you? I'm <laughs> really good. Bob, I'm going to. I'm just starting um, through the. Uh, uh, to go through our mental health first aid webinar, the, the document. So I'll ask you to mute yourself if you don't mind, and uh, I'll, um, I'll open up some questions uh, once we've gone through. Open everyone up. You can all unmute yourself and we'll go through some questions. But welcome. Thanks so much for jumping on. Um, so I hope you all can see the screen, and if you can't, can someone just drop into the chat box and let me know? Um, but um, I thought uh, this might be a good way. This, as you can see, I've, well, I've got a couple of pages here. I've got three pages, so uh, you can read through it as I'm speaking to it. Um, but um, as I say, this is this is a very brief overview. So, what is mental health? You might say. Ah. Um, and all of this information comes directly from this book. I haven't ad hoc or anything. It's all direct information from here, so I know it's correct. Um, the World Health Organization has defined it as a state of well-being in which the individual realizes his or her own ability to cope with the normal stresses of life and can work productively and fruitfully 
whilst being able to make a contribution to his or her community. In the context of this information sheet, mental health is seen as ranging from having good mental health to having mental illness. A mental disorder or a mental illness is a diagnosable illness that affects the person's thinking, emotional state and behaviour and disrupts the person's ability to work or carry out daily activities and engage in satisfying personal relationships. Some people will only have one episode in their life while others will have multiple episodes with periods of wellness in between. Only a small minority have ongoing mental health problems. And I suppose this, I found this a little bit interesting that, you know, people can fall in and out of mental health. It's not, you know, they've got it and then it's there with, with them all the time. That they, they can fall in and out of different mental um, health conditions, but also um, mental health such as depression can live with, you know, anxiety will be next door and um, a psychosis might be in there as well. So so people will have a range of these conditions, not, not just one, and one may lead to another. So therefore, you know, early intervention is really important. Um, so some types of mental illnesses are, and I'm just going through the, the main or the basic ones, depression and anxiety disorders, which, you know, we, we know that are common. And then there are some which are not common, such as schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. We will go over a few of the more common issues and what we can do to assist people who have these disorders. Um, does anyone have any questions that they want to throw in the chat box before I go any further? Or you can unmute yourself if you want to. No. Okay. So this also I felt was quite interesting. Um, that. The most recent national survey in Australia shows that one in five or 20% of people between the age of 16 to 85 years will experience some form of common mental illness in any one year. And I thought that was quite astounding. In Australia, that works out to 3.2 million people. Other research shows that 0.45% of adults aged between 18 to 64 have a psychotic disorder such as schizophrenia in any one year. Many people with a common mental illness do not seek any professional help. And I think, you know, we, we are aware of this, we know this. Um, and this is why it's even more important that we have this awareness to encourage them if they're open to it to seek some form of professional help or to, or to support them and help them in some way. There are a range of interventions for mental health problems and mental health first aid comes into play in the early intervention stage to prevent the illness from becoming more serious. The longer people delay getting help and support, the more difficult the recovery, which is what I was saying before. So, so that, that's why it's so important to have this awareness of um, changes in people's behaviour, you know, if you see a friend, work colleague or someone in your group whose behaviour is suddenly very different, um, it, it, it's worth just, you know, pricking up those ears and, and uh, keeping an eye out um, and just asking them, you know, is everything okay or there are ways to do this, you don't obviously confront them in amongst the whole group of people and say, what's going on, um, there, there are ways to do this, so, um, which, we will, which we will go through. But it's, it's just having that awareness of how people are and if, if there's something about them is changing. Just to have an extra ear out or an extra eye out for, for what's happening uh, with them. So next question um, is what is mental health first aid? So it is the help offered to a person developing a mental health problem or are experiencing a worsening of an existing mental health problem or who are in a mental health crisis. First aid is given until appropriate professional help is received or until the crisis is over. No different to normal physical first aid. Um, first aid is assist uh, and um, just basically, you know, hold the fort until the professionals come along. We, we can't diagnose um, anything. We, we're just there to, to help in, in our capacity. 
Um, the course teaches how, so this is referring to the actual course that I did, uh, which as I said before was a two day course, it was just an amazing eye opener, um, taught by very caring uh, mental health nurses, so, so the people that run the courses are actually you know, fully trained mental health nurses, they, they know their stuff. Um, so they, they've been working in mental health for many, many years and they've stepped into a teaching role, so they know what they're talking about. Um, the course teaches how to recognise the symptoms of different illnesses and mental health crisis, how to offer and provide initial help, and how to guide a person towards appropriate treatments and other supportive help. It does not teach people how to provide a diagnosis or therapy, so this is really important that they're not teaching us how to diagnose or treat, they're just teaching us um, how to provide uh, appropriate help. Um, physical first aiders have a system of letters to follow so they know what to do. So, you know, doctors A, B, C, D, or there might be more letters after that now, I haven't done mine for a little while. Um, but, uh, but also, a mental health first aid also has a system which is called LG. Um, and uh, they're those letters are used as a guide to what action to take, although they're not in any particular order. And I, I just thought too, um, the reason this book, or this mental health first aid course was developed, because there was the, the founder um, who, or the co-founder, the former CEO and current board member of Mental Health First Aid, Betty and her husband, Tony, they co-founded the Mental Health First Aid pro program because she suffered mental health. Um, she had a mental health condition. And she felt that people didn't really understand people that um, had mental health conditions. So she set about to put a course together based on what someone, uh, what someone needed who was going through a mental health crisis or issue. So she asked them, what do you need from us? How can we help you? So, and I think that's really valuable because it just shows a much more caring, soft, open approach um, rather than saying to someone, you need to do this or you, you know, this is what needs to happen. The, the person more than likely has had this condition for a while uh, or, or they're aware of it or, or they know what works for them. So it, it's always better to ask someone, you know, in the initial stages, what what can I do for you? And um, because they may have a way of managing their condition uh, if they're a long, you know, have have long term mental health issues. So I think yeah, that it, it's a great thing that she's actually written this whole book based on, um, you know, not from the practitioner um, treating the patient, but from the patient's point of view, um, the person who's the, Suffering the illness, what what they need. So I think that's worth pointing out. Um, okay, so uh, does anyone have any questions? Does anyone want to throw anything in the chat box or open up their microphones before I go any further? No. Okay. Um, so I guess this is probably some information that we really want to know, what to look for. Uh, you may be aware of these things, you, you may not. And certainly some of these things I went, oh. And in, in actual fact, when, when I look at the list of some of these things, I thought, I've actually been in that place. You know, in some parts of my life, I've gone, oh, actually, I've felt the majority of those things. I had no idea that I was in a depressed state. Um, and, and, and I think, you know, it's worth recognising that anyone can go through these things and be in this particular state um, and can obviously recover fully. So um, it's, it's just an awareness as I say. Depression. If a person has a depressive order, they would have five or more of these symptoms, including at least one of the first two, nearly every day for at least two weeks. So a depressed mood. Obviously, we know, you know, when people are depressed, they, they just have that look about them, they have that morose feeling, they've got the energy about them that is very depressed. Loss of enjoyment and interest in activities that used to be enjoyable. So if you know the person, all of a sudden they stop doing stuff, well, that might be a bit of a flag that for you to, you know, just keep an eye out for them. And um, once again, you know, this is not only, not only inclusive of the people in your group, it's, you know, your family, your friends, your work colleagues. Um, 
feeling worthless or feeling guilty when they are not really at fault, thinking about death a lot or of suicide, difficulty concentrating or making decisions, moving more slowly or sometimes becoming agitated and unable to settle, having sleeping difficulties or sometimes sleeping too much, loss of interest in food or sometimes eating too much. Changes in eating habits may lead to either loss of weight or putting on weight. So, so obviously some of these things you can't see from the outside, but once you uh, move into a discussion with them and you know, you, you've approached them and they're happy to talk to you, if you're hearing some of this, or once again more, more flags that are indicating that this person really does need some, perhaps some professional help. Uh, so these are all key indicators. Um, the next one that uh, mental uh, health in the is fairly common um, is anxiety. So um, things that point towards anxiety, thinking, mind racing or going blank, decreased concentration and memory, um, indecisiveness, confusion, vivid dreams, um, that how they're feeling, they have unrealistic or excessive fear and worry about past and future events. They are irritable, they're impatient, they have anger, they feel on the edge or they're nervous. Um, from a behaviour point of view, there's an avoidance of situations, they have an excessive or compulsive behaviour, distress in social situations, sleep disturbance, increased use of alcohol or other drugs. So once again, some of these things you'll see and notice, um, other other things you'll you'll gain from you know having a discussion with them. So the physical um, <coughs> excuse me aspect of anxiety: uh, a pounding heart, chest pain, rapid heartbeat, flushing, um, rapid shallow breathing, and shortness of breath, dizziness, headache, sweating, tingling, and numbness, choking, dry mouth. Stomach pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, um, muscle aches and pains, especially neck, shoulders and back, restlessness, tremors and shaking. So just knowing all these things, you know, um, might, it just gives you an idea that uh, perhaps they're not actually having a heart attack, perhaps it's, you know, anxiety because it's relating to lots of other things, but obviously you don't, um, uh, you wouldn't just completely categorise that because we're not diagnosing, but I, I just think it's, it's worth knowing that all these things uh, are attributed to anxiety and you might be able to say to someone, look, it's okay, it might just be that you're over anxious, these symptoms are because, you know, are created um, as a result of anxiety. Um, the next one I wanted to go through was psychosis and I think this is the one that has um, actually triggered this whole um, thing about mental health because we had a post which I, could, I actually could never read it for some reason, I couldn't see it. But it was about someone who um, had a mental health condition and it, they went to a meditation class and it triggered a psychotic episode. Um, and so therefore there was concern amongst the leaders, well what happens if someone in our group has a, has a psychotic episode? Um, so, you know, this, this is why I went, I wanted to do this course so I could, you know, so I knew what to do um, and uh, I could uh, let others know that, you know, this pain really is quite beneficial. But I don't want to, I don't want you to think also that this is going to happen all the time because 0.45% in any one year, these disorders are less common than other mental illnesses. You might, you may never come across this but I, it's just nice to be aware. So what is psychosis? Psychosis is a general term to describe a mental health problem in which a person has lost some contact with reality. There are severe disturbances in thinking, emotion and behaviour that can severely disrupt the person's life. Relationships, work and self-care can be difficult to initiate or maintain. I'll just go through this again because I don't want people to be feeling anxious about you know people in their classes having uh, a psychotic disorder. These disorders are less common than other mental illness, 
affecting about 0.45% of adults in any one year. There are numerous disorders in which a person can experience psychosis, including schizophrenia, psychotic depression, bipolar disorder, which can involve psychotic depression or psychotic mania, uh, schizoaffective disorder, and drug-induced psychosis. All big words, and yes, I, I, I would have to look them up to see what the exact symptoms of those were. But here are some um, things to look out for. Oh, that's going out of there. Irritability. Okay. So, what would we, how would we see if someone's got psychosis or we might have an idea that something's going on? So, we'd be noticing changes in emotion and motivation. Depression, anxiety, irritability. As I said, you know, people don't have all these symptoms or these mental illnesses. You know, just depression or just anxiety or just bipolar. They, people can have all of these in combination or individually. Um, so depression, anxiety, irritability, suspiciousness. So they're suspicious of every everyone and everything. They're very blunt in their behaviour. They have flat or an inappropriate emotion. Uh, they're changing appetite, reduced energy and motivation. Um, we might also notice changes in thinking and perception, difficulties with concentration or attention, sense of, al sense of alteration of self, self or others outside um, outside their world. Sorry, I should fix that. Um, feeling that self or others have changed or are acting differently in some way. So they might have odd ideas, unusual perceptual experiences. So um, at, during this course, they had. Um, a person who was having a, 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 a psychosis episode, and um, they they thought that they were being chased by um, aliens, and they were terrified. They they didn't want to go outside. They were they feared for other people's safety. Um, they were con constantly talking to themselves. Um, that that they were just in absolute fear of something that we couldn't see, but it was very, very real for them. In their, in their world, that's what, that's what was happening. Uh, so, so they had an old, um, they had a, um, unusual perceptual experience and their sense of, um, concentration and attention, their alteration of self and others was quite huge. They had odd, odd, odd ideas. Um, and so, and they can also have a reduction or greater intensity of smell, sound, or colour. Uh, changes in behaviour, sleep disturbance, social isolation or withdrawal, um, reduced ability to carry out work or social roles. So, you know, you, you might have a neighbour that you've seen regularly, you know, they might live alone, but then all of a sudden you might notice changes in behaviour. So perhaps it's worth, um, you know, just dropping in, just say hi, are you okay? Can I? A cup of tea or something. So um, there, there are ways to to approach them, but just to be aware of these uh, changes in people's behaviour. Okay, what to do? Does anyone have any questions or want to put anything in the chat box or unmute before I go further? No. Okay. So, what to do? Here is the algae. So, I'll just scroll through. We've got A L G E E. So, this is the um, acronym. Is it, is it an that right word? Acronym. Uh, each of these letters gives you a guideline as to what to do, just like physical first aid in, in uh, doctors. Um, a B C C. Um, so, we have approach the person, assess, and assist in a crisis. So you can approach the person if you have concerns about their mental health, but find a suitable time and space to chat where you both feel comfortable. Uh, so you know you, you might just go and grab a coffee or go and for a walk or something. Um, as a first aider, it is okay to bring up your concern even if the other person does not. So even if they don't bring anything up, because you're a first aider, it's okay to say, oh, you know, I've noticed that. Um, you know, you feel a, you seem a little bit agitated, or you seem a little bit down lately. Is everything okay? Um, 
and they may wish to talk to you or not. Hopefully they do, but if they don't, well, you have to more than likely need to wait for another opportunity. Um, always respect the person's privacy and confidentiality. So if they are happy to talk to you, it, it, you know, what I wanted to say what goes on to a stays on but just don't talk about it to anyone else. But they feel safe to speak to you and that's really important as to no one else's um, uh, unless of course you know you feel that there are suicidal interests that is there. Um, listen and communicate non-judgmentally. This is so important. Don't judge. You know, we these people have completely different perceptions about what's going on, how they're feeling, to what you know, um, fully functioning mental uh, people that don't have mental health issues. So, so what what they're thinking and feeling is totally real for them. So we must not be judgmental about their situation. Um, allow the person to speak freely and feel as if they have been heard. And often that's the greatest thing. Uh, Thich Nhat Hanh is one of the greatest healing um, things that people can do is listen and allow someone to be heard. So, um, you know, to allow someone to just really let go and say everything that they want to, but feel like they're actually being listened to is very, very healing. Uh, so that, um, that's really important. Uh, communicate and listen in a non-judgmental way. Uh, do not express, that they're just so hot on this, do not express any judgment. Listen with empathy. Be very, um, you know, show, show empathy to this situation because remember, for them, this, whatever they're going through, it, it's just totally real and um, affecting them uh, in, in a, you know, in a not, not a good way. So that's A, that's L. Uh, G, give support and information. So when the person feels they've been listened to, it will be easier for the first aider to offer support and information, such as empathising with how they feel and giving hope for recovery, which is another really important thing. Always give hope for recovery, as well as offering assistance with any practical tasks that may seem overwhelming for the person. It might be as simple as you know helping to. Um, pick up the kids after school or um, drop in a meal or um, you know offer to do some shopping for them or you know obviously depending on what your relationship with that person is but if you think that there's something that will help them in um, in their time of need then um, you know you you're off, offer them that support. Um, encourage the person to get appropriate professional help. The first aider can offer options of professional help or support. Ask them if they have spoken with their GP, their GP or suggest a visit. If they are resistant because they have heard a bad story about the GP only giving pills, because you find, you know, a lot of people go, oh no, I'm not going to the doctor because, you know, they're just going to put me on drugs and, and I don't want to be on pills. Um, you can perhaps then <coughs> offer to go and do some research and say, well, I, I actually know of a GP who, who doesn't do that, that they look at, you know, that they look at the whole picture and they'll work out what's best for you um, and they'll listen to you. So um, help them find or research um, finding an, a good GP for them to go to because not all GPs are the same. So that's the first point of call is their GP. Um, as I say, we, we cannot diagnose or suggest they go and see a counsellor or a psychoanalyst or anything. We, we, we don't know what's going on. That's not our role. We're just there to support. Um, encourage other support. The first aider can also encourage the person to use self-help strategies such as seeking the support of family or friends or community groups. So they might have been part of a knitting circle, for instance, and all of a sudden they've dropped off. Well, you know that they used to play sport and footy and you know, or they used to play golf and now they don't. So encouraging them uh, to, um, you know, go back to those support groups or contacting their family um, to, you know, to really utilise the, the support of their surrounding community or community groups. Um, as I've said here, it's important to not to diagnose if we're not qualified, only to suggest that they go to their local GP and if they're worried about going to their local GP because they've got a preconceived idea, then you can certainly do some research and help them find a good one. Um, another really valuable thing, so I'm just about to finish up here and I'll open it up for questions, 
Organisations such as Beyond Blue in Australia will send out comprehensive intervention booklets for free for you to have available for your clients. So I did. I ordered 10 of everything. I got this great big box and um, it, it all came for free. I put them out on my table uh, on my first day back. Half of it went. Half of my books went. And I just went, wow, this is amazing. Um, so I'm going to order some more. And the next, the next time I came along, uh, so the next week, I had some people that didn't come the first week, came the second week, and they took them as well. So, you know, um, the, and they're such good books, and I had feedback from the people that had taken them the week before. These books are fantastic. So even if they take these books to, um, you know, drop, if they've got a friend in me, and they can just go in and, um, leave it on the coffee, coffee table, you know. Uh, that they don't need to confront the person if they don't feel comfortable, it's not appropriate, but you could just leave the book on their, you know, in their kitchen or their coffee table so they, they do have opportunity to have a look through it because it's uh, full of amazing interventions, big, big books they are, um, one on um, anxiety and one on depression. So that's all I have. Now um, I'm, I'm just going through and unmuting everyone or you can unmute yourselves if you like if you want to drop in um, uh, with questions. Oh, I can see Bronwyn, can somebody help me? I can see Susan but I can't hear anything. Oh, tried my phone for it's asking for info I don't have. Oh, okay. So I'm not sure if we've still got Bronwyn on or not. Alright, so if you would like to unmute yourself and jump in and ask a question, please do so. Thanks Susan. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> That's that was okay. really cool. I'm just wanting to, um, I thought I might share with the group well and just put it past what they sort of had to say about this. It's not so much in um, your own life but in, in groups. Um, this is from my yoga teacher training is to keep that sort of a space of personably impersonable so that you're being friendly but you're not taking, like sometimes... Um, at the end of a class, and often mine flow through back to back so they don't have the time, but sometimes you can get uh, somebody really needing to talk, um, but you might not be able to give them the right um, space to do that if you've got a next class coming in or what have you, um, or you need to get out of the room or what have you. So, And they can also take that to a, a higher level where they start to see you as someone that they can sort of offload onto. Um, and sometimes that's not appropriate. So what, um, in that regard, do they have any sort of personably impersonable try kind of suggestions? Oh, do they? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I was actually with a psychologist. Um, we get through, we get together through Meditation Australia. And she actually was saying exactly the same thing. Um, you can say, let me know how you go with that. Um, so if you make a suggestion rather than go, um, uh, give me a call or, you know, um, uh, as you say, not, not be as personable, but you can, you can acknowledge it and go, let me know how you go, um, and, or I can get back to you. So particularly with the, the changeover of classes, because you're not you're not going to have that, that time, as you say. Um, and not only that, it also changes the dynamics between you and a student if you've had yeah. personal details, um, which sometimes can make it uncomfortable in a group setting. Mm. Well, yeah, I, I mean, obviously we wouldn't be um, discussing within the group. No, but no, no, but even yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, um, I, I suppose I, I would just say, look, um, can I chat, chat with you um, after class or can I catch up with you at the next class? I'm not sure 
we probably need to get some advice on that. Has anyone else got some ideas on what we can do there? No? No? Okay. No. okay. Yeah, but it's, it's a good question, Marty. So why don't I do some research on that? If you'd like to. Okay. <laughs> I suppose it depends on your relationship with your students. It can yeah. sometimes tip over into a... What was that? Sorry, my sound's cut out during that bit. Oh, did it? <laughs> we were talking about being personably impersonable with our students. Who was that? Um, Paul, are you there? I think there's a delay. No, I can't. I can't hear him. No, me neither. Yeah. So, um, okay. Let's uh, let me ask the psychologist. Oh, okay. Oh, are you there, Paul? No. So no. Um, what I'll do is I'll ask the psychologist and find out... Uh, Isn't it reception, I think? Yeah. Yes, it's a bit delayed. Um, to see what the best approach would be there. But good question, great question, Marty. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, because I've always wondered where about that line because sometimes, you know, I'll... I'll start talking to a student, um, but sometimes they they really want to get in deep, um, but that's not my place. I'm not. Yeah, but yeah, where's how do you do it kind? You know, I do it kindly, but it's like, yeah. I mean, unless unless you said, look, that you know, this is this is really interesting, or you know, um, what what you've got to say, is that have you spoken to your doctor about it? This might be a conversation that you need to have with your GP. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that, that might be a way. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Thanks, Suzanne. Yeah, no, thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? No? I think there's questions. still a lot of people muted. Yeah. Uh, ah. Okay, so I've just unmuted BB. Can you hear us, BB? And I'm trying to unmute Bob. Bob, are you there? Nothing. I can see you. Oh, he's left the room. There's only a map on the back wall there. <laughs> oh. He was there. <laughs> I can't. I'm having trouble unmuting people. But you can unmute yourself. Oh, Susan, I just, uh, Suzanne, I just unmuted you. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Yes. And yeah, I've been listening and it sounds like people are underwater all the time. <clears throat> uh, probably um, the internet. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Will uh, we I get to um, watch this again? Will this be put on? Yes. It's being recorded. Oh, good. So yes, you should. Yeah, once uh, I'll be able, I'll download it tonight, so you, you will see it tonight. Thanks, Susan. That's okay, and I still can't seem to um. All right. Does anyone else have any questions, or would you like to put it into the chat box? No. Oh, Bibi said I can at the moment. I don't have a microphone. Okay, so I just like to say, Bibi, do you have any question? Do you have a question, Bibi? No. N Nidhi, no. do you have a question? No. No. Just to go all this information, but I don't have a question. So. Oh, okay. Um. Uh, BB's asked, when's our next pack up? Um, uh, probably in February, end of February. We try to have them once a month. Um, 
So if you have any topics that you'd like us to cover, then more than happy to um, get some ideas on that. But yes, yes, baby. Generally, we have these once a month, and um, we like to have a, a, a topic of some description. So, if someone has um, anything that they would like to um, to discuss, that would be lovely. Let me know. All right. So, if we don't have any other questions, we might just wrap it up. So thank you very much everybody for listening and attending. I will put these notes onto our Facebook group into the notes section, into the file section and um, you'll be able to um, go in and print them off. And uh, I can, if anyone knows of um, a, a mental health um, training centre in their area, uh, please let me know. In their area? I can um, uh, direct you to the mental health first aid in Australia um, through SA Health, but not to, not for any of the other states. So, <laughs> if anyone knows uh, or could do some research for me, that would be lovely. That would be great help. All right. Well, I might just wrap it up then. Thank you so much for having Have a lovely evening. Stay cool. Thanks, Thank Suzanne. You. And you're just going to stay on the line for a minute. I just want to mention something after we go. <laughs> right. Bye. 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 I think Marty's hung up. I thought she wanted me to stay on. <laughs>